everyone, and welcome back to the show. I have the amazing Stephanie Walter today. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited to have you on. So Stephanie Walter is a capital raiser, syndicator, and the CEO of Airbay Wealth. She recently retired and sold her insurance agency of get this, 16 years by following the key principles she teaches professionals to use. She teaches professional people to unlearn what most of us have been wired to think about money and re-educating people to learn the secrets of the wealthy investor that can be life transforming. She is a gateway between these professionals and the well-vetted deals. Welcome again, Stephanie. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. So let's talk about this. You recently retired. How did that feel? Because I know so many of my listeners are at that point where they, they're they hoping for like that next step, either, either after being able to retire or being able to retire one of their family members or just simply leaving their nine to five. How were you able to do that within oh. the time period you did? <laughs> Well, it actually, once I had actually had the mindset change, which there was definitely a mindset change that happened. Um, it took, it really, I mean, about uh, so from 2016 to 2021, uh, July is when I sold my practice. And so, um, yeah, it's, it, uh, for me, it, it was just kind of like a, it was a whole <laughs> long story. I can, I can shorten it a bit, but, um, I Let's dive into it. Like, this is yeah. what, this is what this show is about. It's about you discovering for us what that mindset shift is. Cause one of my listeners is, I know they're going through this mindset change. So yes. give them what you had to go through to be able to come out of your 16 year business and into what is now like your place, like your, it seems to be like your like superpower. So yeah. how did you discover that? Well, I, uh, well, I've always loved real estate. It, it always made sense to me. Um, i never was really very educated with it. Uh, I, I started even when 16 years ago, when I was the insurance agent, I bought um, small rental properties, you know, single family homes. And the idea behind it was, well, I'll just buy these and um, sit on them for 30 years. And then that will be my retirement, you know? Um, and, you know, I happened to do most of my purchasing between 2005 and and 2011. So it was a lot of, there were, it was a good time to be buying. So I felt like I was right on track with that strategy. And then um, I was invited to a boot camp about apartment investing. And I thought, well, I'll go, you know, that seems interesting, like an interesting idea. And I went in and they talked about what a syndication was. And uh, I tell people, you know, who think they're too old for things to change them. I was 45 when I um, sat into that. And I, it's to me, I explain it like, I feel like the heavens opened up, the <laughs> sun shone, shone down on me. And I was like, this is it. This is it for Angel me. started I, singing. I, I just loved the idea of a group of people purchasing something that no one could do by themselves. I loved it. <laughs> so I, I um, did a deep dive there because, you know, my measly little uh, education in real estate wasn't going to get me very far. So you just, I joined one of the groups that it was RE mentor at the time. And um, basically you get a master's in commercial real estate. Um, and from there in 2018, I closed by myself on my first syndication and uh, decided after that, that I would never, ever, ever do a syndication by myself again. And uh, hooked up with my partner who just, you know, I wish that it was more deep and insightful, but we just kind of found each other and 
we've been working with each other ever since. It turns out just by luck that we have a lot of the same philosophies in um, of how we value you know, our investors and how we wanted to grow our business. And so now we're on our eighth deal together. But back to the mindset is, uh, so I realized I like to raise capital. And that was really my function in my partnership, because my partner loves to find the deals and and run the deals and do all of that. But he doesn't like to um, talk to people (laughs) or raise money. Um, so (laughs) I got to really fortunate to work with some really amazing investors, really, they're very smart. Um, a lot of them are very successful in their own right, but going over their financials, just lots of things stuck, uh, stuck out to me. And, uh, it wasn't immediately obvious what was going on. It took some time, uh, And uh, I realized that they look at their money differently than I was. I was looking at my money as it's accumulating. It's here is my my pot and it uh, of my real estate or that could be someone's 401k. It could be many things where you're just going to let it sit and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And then eventually, and don't touch it, don't do anything with it, just let it keep doing its thing and then go get it after 30 years. Uh, What I noticed with them is they don't have their money doing that. They're very, very focused on investing in things that give them cash flow almost immediately. Um, If you ask them what's more important to them, cash flow, or net worth, most people, most of the wealthy people I deal with would tell you cash flow. And I was the exact opposite. I'd go over my net worth every every year and be like, ooh, aren't I doing good? But you know, I'm I'm getting a couple hundred dollars in cash flow on in these properties. You know, I wasn't at all concerned with the cash flow. So I call this the difference between the way I was viewing money is accumulation. And I think most people in our society view their money that way, putting it in a 401k, not touching it, um, not using it. The money essentially is not working. It's just a way, but the wealthy people look at their money as they use it. It's utilization. That money is being used all the time the very, very, very smart and very wealthy people find ways of using their money in several places, sometimes at the same time. Um, and But the results is that money is a tool and that tool needs to be well used every day. And um, it's, it's providing for it. So I changed my mindset of uh, selling my rentals uh, one by one. I just sold my last one uh, in April and took that um, the appreciation in those properties and invested them in well-vetted deals that I'm a part of as well. Um, and yeah, and then the cash flow, the cash flow is the thing at the end of the day that allowed me to replace my income and retire. Um, and so that... That's the long and short of it. (laughs) I love all of it. There's a lot to unpack there, but I love how you took us through your journey, took us through your mindset. And one of the most important things that you teach people is to unlearn what they have been thought about. What we've been taught about money is just, you know, you get it, you put it away, you get your point whatever percent in your savings account. And then you go back to it or in your 401k, whatever percentage you get there, you go back to it when you need it. And then when you need it, you know, more often than not, there's probably not going to be enough there. So those that are actually growing their wealth are putting their money to use. And I love that. I love that you discovered that for yourself. And now you're teaching other people to do that. Let's unpack a little bit of what you were talking about. So I want to go back to what you were saying about liking the capital raise and about your partnership. So it sounds like you found your partnership and that and how your first syndication you did by yourself. So my question for you is, (laughs) in that first syndication, what happened there that changed your mind about trying to do it alone? 
Well, I think it came from me being a, an entrepreneur uh, and I'd always done everything myself. And so I just, I guess in my mind, I never really played team sports or anything. I was just kind of like solo, you know, tennis player or, you know, skier or whatever. I, I've never worked a lot with teams. And, um, and so that I was like, I'll just do it myself. That's just what I'll do. But um, you realize that this, this is a huge syndication is a huge thing. And I think if anyone's new to it, we're all thinking about we were all thinking about getting your first deal, getting that one done, getting it done. But then when you close on it, then all of a sudden, the (laughs) <laughs> the reality kicks in that that investors have put their hard-earned money um, to, up to you to do what you said you were going to do with it, and and that's a that's a big responsibility. Um, it's not something. It's something. It's a property I still own and actually has done very well. Um, but I still, you know, you that you carry that weight of this property with you. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm it (laughs) for that one. So yeah, I didn't like that feeling as well as I kind of knew, I think in my, you know, you'd love to be good at everything, but there are things that I'm not good at. And, you know, I definitely, uh, my partner is good at, you know, he's a numbers guy. He's like, he just put him in a room with numbers and he's, he's a happy man. Um, I, I am not. Um, so, uh, I think in, and it's interesting in this, in this industry, because one side of this syndication, you know, is finding and vetting and running the deal, which is very analytical. You see a lot of engineers and IT people, just a lot of like, very detailed, but then the other side of raising is raising money. Now that's a different personality type altogether. You've got to be good at marketing and um, just a ton of skills that I doubt I've I've seen in all one person. So I was relieved to find someone who had the skills I didn't. But yes, learning early on in this field that it is a group sport. So if you can find your, what you're good at and, and do it, hopefully you can find someone that, you know, fills the gaps that, that you have. Multifamily is definitely a team sport. And doesn't it feel so good to find someone who kind of, I don't want to say they complete you, yeah. but they get to, they, they get to do the things that you don't want to do. And then you get to sit and be in where you flourish. So let's talk a little bit about the capital raise. Um, explain to us for, especially for some of my newer investors out there, how do you go about doing that? How do you go about talking to investors and bringing them into your, into your world? Yeah, it's a lot, it's a learning process for sure. It has been, I've been, you know, seriously raising for deals now since 2019, actually, that's when I did my first deal with my partner and we've done eight. Um, And so uh, it was a lot of, of learning a lot, a lot of learning. There's there now there are some, some resources that I found, um, but it would have been nice to have known about these earlier on. So I think you just, you throw something at the wall and just hope that something sticks. You try, I remember from my insurance background, my father gave me some advice and just said, don't, think that just one thing is going to work. You know, you, you got to do probably like 10 or 20 things and all of them will work a little bit, you know? And so I kept that same mentality. So, you know, certainly, and the interesting thing is uh, people thought, oh, well, you're an insurance agent. You could just go back to your clients and have them invest. And I, I have not had one client invest. I, I, I didn't really go after them necessarily, but I think they see you in one light and, you know, they don't, you know, that's too different for them for, so for me, it was just kind of, it's, it was a lot of things. I know that doesn't sound exciting. 
Um, it's been, you know, going out to your friends and family, letting them know what you do. Uh, that usually takes some time. You know, they don't want to get into your first deal. They want us now it's, it's becoming easier because we have a longer track record, but those first few deals, I'm, I'm so grateful to the people that, that opened their wallets up for that one. But I, I know I, I, uh, I think finding people that you know are givers. I think we all know people like that. They're just people that just want to help. And so I contacted someone like that and told him what I was doing. And he was like, well, let me get together. He, four guys, they're, they're all men, um, and sit down and talk to them. And that was really intimidating because I was very new. Um, but out of that, um, one many years later became an investor. But the first one, an older gentleman, he became one of my first investors. And he is one of the smartest men to this day that I've ever met. Um, but from him, he, he has referred other people over. So the referral is always like, that's the best, you know. Um, so I think identifying, like I said, because there are people that are recognizing the givers and then giving to them and, you know, hoping that, that they will refer over to you, um, is big. But the thing that took me a long time to realize was the content. Yeah. You have to have a lot of content you have to have, uh, you know, a good website. I'm actually going to be talking to my website lady um, in, uh, right after this, actually, and I'm um, talking about redesigning the website because things are always changing and, and you're seeing things. But the way that I look at it is you're funneling people into your website. And then from there, they, you know, download, uh, they look at content, they follow you, you know, in LinkedIn or, or Instagram or whatever. And then over time, then they get to know, like, and trust you. And, and then, you know, when, when we have a, an opportunity, which we have probably two or three a year, um, those go, those notifications go out to our database, but it's really, I didn't realize it, but there's just a tremendous amount of education in this industry be, because people have never heard of it uh, largely. And that, that's what drives me because that that's what I feel like my purpose is going forward for the, you know, duration of my career um, is, is letting people know about this type of investing because it truly changes people's lives. I love it. So basically what you do is you connect, you educate, and then you bring them in and you provide the opportunity. I mean, that's basically what we do as, I personally don't like to call it capital raising, I call it providing opportunity. Yeah. That's capital it. raising, it feels like, it feels like I'm like asking for stuff. What we're doing <laughs> is providing an opportunity they would not usually or normally have, especially if they don't even know it exists. So what you're doing is educating them. And that's, that's fantastic because you're teaching them a whole different way to think. And the thing is, like, it doesn't matter who you talk to, it's just getting the information out there. So for any quote capital raisers out there, if you think that you, that this is something that you think you could be good at, I mean, please reach out to Stephanie. And these, I'm talking directly to you, my listeners, reach out to Stephanie, reach out to me, let us know like how we can help you, how we can educate you and how we can teach you how to connect with people. Cause that's all what it's about, right? Yes. Correct. All about those connections. So before I let you go, can you give us one more tidbit of information, something that my listeners can walk away from and say, you know what, I didn't know that before. This little bit of information can, is going to change my life and allow me to take the next steps, whether it is investing passively or getting into real estate syndication. What is one thing that my listeners can do? Um. Well, the, there, there does need to be a mindset change, you know, and realizing 
getting your goals together. What are you investing for? Are, are you investing so that you, you can tell yourself what your net worth is, but at the end of the day, you know, you don't have a lot of cash flow coming in or do you want to have your goal as I'm going to replace the income that I currently make? And then from there, you maybe you leave your job or maybe you find a job that you truly love for, for the rest of your life. Um, but there you have to have a goal of what you're wanting to achieve. And once you know what that goal is, vetting and finding good syndicators, it takes a little bit of time, but um, you know, just normal due diligence, always checking out the team. That's the most important thing, no matter what anyone tells you in this field. But once you've found that, then you can invest over and over and over again. It's not as hard as, as you think to get involved in this. Um, but I believe that you have to have, figure out what's important to you going forward. I love it. Find out what's important to you going forward, set those goals, do your research, and above all, just do it because it's not that hard. Right. Stephanie, thank you so, so very much. For any of my listeners that want to get in touch with you, how can they? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, my website um, is uh, www.erbewealth.com. And I, I am constantly updating that and everything, but there, there's a ton of content on there. There's a great report, the five reasons that passive investing might be for you, for people that are, you know, possibly considering it and wanting to know the benefits of it. Um, but yeah, that, that's a, it's a great place to go. Like I said, education is really big for me. So there's a ton of information on there. Fantastic. So, oh, my listeners, thank you so very much for listening today. If you want more education, you want to touch base with Stephanie, please go over to her website and say hello for me. Thank you again so much, Stephanie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And to all my listeners, have the best day. If you love what you heard, <clears throat> please rate, review, and subscribe. It would mean the world to us. Bye. Aloha. And thank you.